Finish my speakers. Hey. So yeah, I've done my speakers and they sound great and they look pretty good. Although I do have a few thoughts on that I'll talk about later. For now though, I'm gonna rewind a little bit and show you the last couple of days of building finally sort of assembling these things, finishing them, wiring them up, all that kind of good stuff. So um, I'll catch you in a couple of minutes. All right, task number one is to seal the edges of the MDF. So as you might know, MDF takes paint quite well on the, on the sides, but on the ends where it's actually been cut, um, paint just soaks right in and it's almost impossible to get just a nice smooth finish. So I was going to originally uh, put some iron on strips, which are just kind of like smooth strips to, you can paint over, but I've already sanded this all perfectly flush uh, between all of the panels. And when I put those strips on, it sits a little bit proud. So probably needed to plan ahead for that. So I'm doing the next best thing, which is just, I've got some sealer here and I'm just gonna brush on a couple of coats of this. Um, hopefully that'll help the edges to take the paint a bit better. Welcome to the high-tech spray booth. Um, as you can see, I'm doing this sort of not quite mint green, bathroom green, if you will. Uh, weird color for speakers, I know, but it's to match the room it's going in. So I've already got some window trims painted in this color. So that's going to match. Um, you can actually see what I was talking about with the having to seal the MDF. Um, I'll do a close up actually, but here at the front uh, where I haven't bothered to seal it because it's going to be hidden, um, you can see that the, the paint's just soaking in and there's not a very good finish at all. Whereas the top here, and down the side where I have sealed it is actually a really nice finish. So really nice in the relative sense. Um, my spray technique is far from honed. So I'm just gonna see how it goes. So while that coat is drying, I'm moving on to something else. This is the frame that's going to have the, the grill cloth. So this is gonna cover the subwoofer at the bottom of the speaker. What I'm doing is I'm just going to have this magnetic so that you can stick it on, you know, take it off easily if I need to get in there to, um, to change out the driver or do anything with the box. Um, I'll just be able to pop this off. So. I've got one here that I've already done. Pretty simple, just a wood frame. Stretch the grill cloth over and it's just stapled in all around the back there. Um, maybe you can see that. Uh, and then I think, or at least I'm going to try to spray some water on this, get a heat gun on it and see if I can shrink it a bit just to pull this a bit tighter. Um, yeah, and so in the frame, I'm 
So I have these little 19 millimeter magnets. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just measuring in from the corners here and just uh, insetting a magnet. And then I was gonna uh, set them in on the big frames as well. In fact, I have already done one that way, but the magnets aren't quite strong enough to, to reach. I just think through the, the layers of cloth and everything. So I think what I'll actually do is just stick these onto the frame directly, literally just glue them onto the wood frame. Um, so they're just, um, you know, more direct contact with the magnets on here. And I've tested that and it, it seems to work better. It just snaps into place and stays there. So that's the plan. Let's have a look. So in my previous videos, I've been testing and mocking up my speakers using just a transparent acrylic panel. And that's just a sort of sacrificial panel that I bought in the right dimensions, right thickness. So I could drill a heap of holes in it, um, you know, for testing, scuff it up, not worry too much about it. Now I'm not going to be using that panel on my final speakers, obviously. I have got my final panels here. I've actually been sitting on them for quite a while now, and finally I get to show them off. Let's have a look. Et voila. This is the same three millimeter thick 600 by 400 mil acrylic. Um, it's printed, so I've ordered this online through a service called Vistaprint. It might just be an Australian one, I'm not sure, but you know, you can get things printed everywhere. They actually seem to do it on the back, so it does have this backing, which is just white on this side and has the, the print on the other side. It seems to be stuck to the back of the panel. But it's not just stuck like uh, sticky tape or something. It's, it's really fused on there somehow. I'm not really sure how they do it, but it does seem to be a, you know, a good bond. So I'm not really worried about it. This was a triptych artwork that I bought off Etsy and downloaded. It's like 15 bucks. Um, but I've selected two out of the three images and, and had them printed. 
yeah, so drilling through this it makes me a little anxious uh, since they weren't particularly cheap and um, you know, acrylic does tend to crack. I don't want to tear the backing. Um, there's only one way to find out. I'm just going to have to do it and hope for the best. And I'm just going to use the grommet itself to get the distances out of the corner there. And then gently drill a tiny hole. Here we go. Not bad. Yep, we are right through. Oh, it's very neat on the back. So the panels will be attached to the frame in each corner and then to prevent the panel from sagging in the middle I was originally going to attach it to the frame there as well but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, adhesive open cell foam seems to do the trick so actually just stick it there. And that'll just stop the panel from sagging in the center because it's leaned back at a slight angle. One thing I have noticed about these panels is that they do seem to be slightly stiffer than the one I was using for my testing. As I showed, these are printed. So it's probably something to do with that, I'd imagine, the, the backing that they use. Uh, it's not noticeably thicker or anything, so I don't anticipate that there's going to be a massive difference to the sound. Uh, if anything, hopefully it'll be a positive. You never know until you try. wiring these exciters up. Uh, I'm not doing anything too permanent. I'll explain that in a little bit. But this will at least give me quick connects to uh, you know plug and unplug the amp. If you have a little twist in the wire like that, it uh, holds it up away from the panel. So obviously that vibrates if it's touching, so that's handy.
Okay, now I'm just wiring up these binding post plates. I'll screw these into the boxes and just leave the other end of the wires coming out through the speaker hole for when I install the woofers. Of course, you then have to seal behind it. It doesn't have any kind of rubber gasket or anything like the driver does, so more of this stuff. So all that's left is to attach the box to the frame times two and take them inside. Right. Right. Well, that is a snug fit. It occurs to me that I've used the wrong panel or the wrong box. Inputs over here, inputs over here. Should probably be on the same side. So noticeably absent from that video were these, the external crossovers. That's because after all of that other stuff, I was so close to getting these things ready to play some music. 
I just wanted to listen to tunes, so I just did it. I didn't video it. I wired it up sort of temporarily and um, enjoyed the fruits of my labor. So I've been listening to electronic music, acoustic, vocal centric type stuff, a little bit of everything. Uh, obviously, I'm testing out speakers, so it's exciting to see what they can do. And so far, pretty much everything sounds good. I was a little worried in my last video. I was wondering whether or not I should port these boxes or whether I should have gone with a ported design in the first place. The answer so far is no. Now that I've got them in this room, and it is a fairly small room, uh, the bass is punchy when it needs to be punchy, but it also seems to go lower than I expected. Um, maybe there's some kind of room gain happening there. I'll have to do some further measurements in room to you know, figure that one out, but certainly when I'm listening to, to most of the music that I'd normally listen to, which is pretty varied, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything in the low end. Where I might feel I'm missing out on something is in the upper high frequencies. It doesn't really feel like it's lacking treble, but it does feel like it could use a little bit of sparkle and pop at the top end. So what I'm considering is adding a tweeter or super tweeter uh, backwards firing just to give a little of, bit more ambience and kind of air to the sound. Obviously, future video if I decide to go down that path. So what's left to do on these things? So I think next up I will be looking at the crossovers, just doing a, a neater and better install of those inside the wooden boxes. And to go with that, I will make up some custom cables. Uh, as you saw, my wiring in the speakers sort of goes to two different points. So it'll be a kind of two into four cable uh, on those. Other than that, the stuff that I'm not quite so happy about is mostly cosmetic and that's mostly down to my inexperience in building stuff. So this is now my third build of DML speakers and I'd have to say just from my initial listening, easily the best. I would go as far as to say that unless you've got lots of space and you're working with huge panels and lots of power, this is almost certainly the way to go, the hybrid approach. Not only can you get you know, deeper, more powerful bass response more easily by using a conventional woofer or subwoofer, but you reduce the load on both the panel and the exciter. As the measurements show, a lot of the nasty resonances in the DML panels tend to be at those low frequencies where they're just a little bit out of control. By crossing these over at 250 hertz, I've basically eliminated that problem altogether. So now the, the panel is more stable and better able to reproduce the mids and high frequencies. In addition to that, the actual exciter, the, the driver itself, no longer has to worry about producing those, the, you know, the very low end. Not only do I expect it will last longer, but to my ear it does sound sweeter, as I said in my measurement video, uh, my crossover measurement video. It just kind of frees it up to do a, a better job of the other frequencies. So yeah, a couple more tweaks and finishing touches still to come on these things, but most of the work is done now. My next video is going to be a music demo. I've been pinged in the comments before for just demoing my speakers with crappy YouTube music. So I'm going to rectify that. I'll demo these things with some classic audio file reference type tracks and then a couple of more modern tracks that I think really show off what they can do. So I hope you'll join me for that. If you're interested in hearing that, don't forget to subscribe so you actually see the video. Uh, so I think that's it for today. Until next time, I'm just going to go lie on the couch, drink a beer, and listen to some tunes. See ya.